We're here today in the lovely little village of Cullern in Stirlingshire and we're here to highlight this amazing obelisk which stands behind me which is over a hundred feet tall built in 1788 and dedicated to one of the village's greatest sons George Buchanan who was born here in 1506. He was a humanist scholar by which we mean a scholar in Greek and Latin and he wrote quite a few political works in Latin. He was also a tutor to Queen Mary and her son, James VI. And we're gonna talk about that in this video. So we know that George Buchanan went to St. Andrews University and he went to St. Andrews University specifically to study logic under John Mayer. Now, John Mayer was one of the first people in Scotland to advocate for British Union. When John Mayer left St Andrews and went to Paris, George Buchanan followed him over and George would be about 20 at the time. In his life, his main political work is considered to be De Dur Regni Apud Scotus, which translates as of the Kingdom of the Scots. And this argued, this work of Buchanan's, it argued for the accountability of monarchs to the people. Something which was quite cutting edge back in that day. By 1553, George Buchanan was to become a supporter of the Reformation. By 1560, he was to become a tutor to Mary, Queen of Scots, who had been recently widowed. And by 1567, he was, even though he was a layman and was not a preacher, he was to become the moderator of the Church of Scotland, the only layman to ever be moderator of the Church of Scotland until 2004. He was also to go on to, in the latter years of his life, to become the tutor of James VI. It's this relationship with James VI which really interests us, because we at A Force for Good believe that James VI was one of the most important kings that Britain has ever had. Buchanan, it is said, sought to turn James into a God-fearing Protestant king who accepted the limitations of monarchy as George Buchanan himself had laid out in his great treatise of the kingdom of the Scots. After Buchanan passed away in 1603, James VI of Scotland was to become James VI of Great Britain under the union of the crowns. Now we often hear James VI referred to as the sixth of Scots and the first of England. And that's the numbering that historians down through the centuries have used. But we at A Force for Good want to change that numbering and we want to change the way people look at that context because James himself believed that in his body, all the people of Britain were united and he wanted to be the king of all the Britons, not just the king for the Scots as number six and King James I for the English. He wanted to see himself as James VI of Great Britain and that's how we term the man. He was the sixth James that existed in the British Isles. Just as Elizabeth II is the second Elizabeth which has existed in the British Isles, even though there hasn't been an Elizabeth I of Scots, she's Elizabeth II of the Britons. Similarly, James was James VI of the Britons, even though there had never been a James in England before. So that's the terminology that we like to use, and we know that James VI would have approved of that. For example, on the 20th of October, 1604, 
King James issued a proclamation wherein he said by royal decree, Wherefore we have thought good to discontinue the divided names of England and Scotland out of our regal style, and do intend and resolve to take and assume unto us in manner and form hereafter the name and style of King of Great Britain. Use of this style is also found on coins of the realm at that time where we see Magni Britannae Rex which means King of Great Britain. And of course the frontispiece of the King James Bible also states in no uncertain terms James by the grace of God King of Great Britain.